Hi, and welcome to the show. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash podcast. Get CME for this episode by clicking on the CME link in the show notes. Today, we welcome Edith Shiro. She's a clinical psychologist. Her book is titled The Unexpected Gift of Trauma. There's an excerpt on that on Kevin MD. We're going to talk about her book today. Edith, welcome to the show. Thank you. Such a pleasure to be with you. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> so we'll talk about your book and Kevin MD article in a little bit, but just first off, briefly share your story and journey. Well, I mean, there's so many stories in my story, but basically right now I, I am a clinical psychologist. I've been working with people for more than 25 years. I've really focused on my, uh, my experience with trauma, post-traumatic stress and post-traumatic growth because I've been exposed to it, not just from a personal point of view, but also from a professional and different parts of the world. So it has really allowed me to understand what's going on in the human mind, in the human experience, and really put it all together to see how we go from trauma to healing, how we go from breakdowns to breakthroughs. So I'm re I've been interested in that throughout my life. All right. And it led you, of course, to write your book, The Unexpected Gift of Trauma. So when people think about trauma, it's normally associated with negative repercussions, negative connotations, but you frame trauma perhaps as, as a gift and how we can uh, grow from that. So tell us more about that and how that leads into your book. Yeah, no, and let's be very, very, very careful not to assume that traumatic events or traumatic experiences are positive. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that when we encounter situations that are so overwhelming, that are shattering to our exist, ex very own existence, that are really breaking our belief system about ourselves, about the world, about the people around us, there is an opportunity. It's like oh, something opens up to really see light in the middle of, the, of those cracks, in the middle of that breakdown. And what I want people to know is that when we see those breakdowns, when we see those cracks, when we see that adversity as a challenging opportunity to do something different with it, as a springboard for transformation, then we can be, really begin to see this as a, as a possibility to go someplace else and not just see trauma as a lifelong, mm. you know, sentence that is like, okay, that's it. I'm doomed. This happened to me. There's nowhere to go. I'm stuck with my problem. I'm stuck with this ex traumatic experience and there's nowhere to go. So really understanding that, yes, there is other ways. There are other opportunities to see this differently. is very, very important. And that's why, really writing the book for me because it's something I've seen throughout my experience and working with patients. I've seen this transformation happen. I've seen it not just individually, but collectively with families, with communities, with groups to say, well, what else can we do with the experiences that we have? And this is what we can do. So I was wondering if you could tell us some stories, some case studies, and it doesn't have to be real patients just from a privacy standpoint, but just, just give us some hypothetical case studies that, that really illustrates that point where sometimes opportunity can arise from trauma. Definitely. I mean, let's start with like really early on in my life when I grew up with Holocaust survivor, people that were Holocaust survivors from, you know, from my, my parents' generations and my grandparents' generations. And just Seeing what some of them did with their experience and how they really connected with life appreciation, with like understanding relationships from a completely different place, for having meaning in their lives, having life purpose, really was incredible to see. I've worked with Cambodian refugees and in, in the Bronx and really seeing how some of the survivors from the Cambodian genocide took their lives on and said, I'm going to be a leader in my community. I'm going to go through the process of healing. And then they became healers for others in their own community. Also, I've had, for example, a couple that came to me a couple years ago during the pandemic because they were going through infidelity. And it really shattered their uh, lifestyle, the way that they were relating to one another. And by doing the process of healing of those steps, going from trauma to growth, they became a completely different couple. They come, you know, they, the way they talk about it now, they say, 
you know, we thought we knew each other before, but now we understand that we we know so much about each other. We understand our relationship from a different place. We were able to heal in this in this difficult moment. And not only that, but really allow for this relationship to have a whole new opportunity, a whole new stage. And I'm not saying there are no problems in the relationship, for example, but you can see the evolution. You can see how amazing it is that they've taken it to another level. So when someone comes to your office and talks about trauma and you're walking them through that process, so what kind of questions and what is the process like for, for, for someone to, to grow from that experience? So one of the very most important things at the beginning is, you know, when I tell, when, if somebody's suffering and somebody's going through something very difficult and you tell them, oh, yeah, trauma is a gift, they're not going to want to hear yeah. that. They're not gonna, That's going to be insulting. So I don't recommend you do that at the beginning. The first step is what I call radical acceptance. Radical acceptance is when you take a pause and you say, let me look at my life. Let me look at myself and see what is it that I'm doing over and over and over that is a repetition of a trauma response? And that trauma response shows up everywhere in my life and keeps me stuck where I am, not allowing me to evolve, not allowing me to, to grow. So when we really recognize and understand that this is what we're doing, it really makes a difference because it can show, it can come up in your life as an addiction. It can come up in your life as a, as being having the same kind of relationships in your life over and over, it can come up in your life as like, you know, trying to do something different and never being able to do, or you stay stuck in the depression, in anxiety, in feeling not good about yourself, about people around you. So it's really taking a pause and saying, let me radically accept, be radically honest to who I am and where I am. And it takes a lot of courage takes a lot of uh, determination to be able to do that because most of us, what we do constantly is we avoid point, pain, we avoid uh, discomfort, and we will do anything not to feel pain and discomfort. So, you know, what I'm suggesting here is to say, well, let's, you know, be courageous and say, let's look at this. Second step in this model is to come and look for support and extend yourself to say, you know what, I cannot do this by myself, which is always the case. We cannot do this transformation by ourselves. We need the other, the other. So usually it's a professional, usually it's a, a guru, a master, a group of people that support you, a family member, a, a friend going into a retreat, going into another part of the world. Like people do different things in different ways to get that safety and protection, that support. And the idea there is to be able to validate your experience. Somebody that can look at you and say, I, I validate you, I understand you. I recognize the pain that you're going through. That's extremely important, not just for individuals, but for groups, for cultures, for communities. Then the third stage is going into a new narrative. How do we create new narratives and new stories about ourselves and about our relationships in order to see that there are other options out there, that there are different, there's a whole range of responses that we can have. We, it's like we are rewriting, rebirthing, re regenerating who we are. Then we integrate all of that. That's the fourth stage. We integrate all who we are, the past, the present, the future. And we understand that. So to get to the fifth stage of wisdom and growth. And this is where the post-traumatic growth happens. This is where we have a new appreciation for life. This is when we have me more meaningful relationships. And this is where we connect with something more spiritual and more meaningful. So tell us the journey to get through those five stages. Are we talking in a span of months to years? And talk about your role as a clinical psychologist in guiding people through that journey. So it depends, really. I mean, this is so personal, individual, and this is so uh, determined by who we are as a, as a person or as a group. 
that for some people it might take a few weeks, for some people it might take years mm. and everything in between. And just to remind you and everybody, this is not a linear process. It's not this is not like a recipe that you follow one, two, three, four, five. It take you know, this is a human experience. So we go up and we go down, we go around. It's more like a spiral, you know, we revisit what we've done and we're going to the next step. And really my role is to facilitate this process, to accompany people into knowing that this is something that can happen and to reminding the person or the group that you can get to this other side and really like becoming almost like a container, like a space holder for that transformation. This is what I do. I really, that's the work that I do. I, I hold space for transformation. Now, for those people who may be skeptical in terms of reframing a trauma or growing from it, what, what do you say to people who is skeptical to that model? So, yeah, and, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not telling the way I talk about it. It's not that this is for everybody. Some people are fine in just staying in where they are. Some people are very, very, very resilient. And being resilient is a great thing. Because you have the resources to face your difficulties. And that's wonderful. And we should be more and more resilient and allow for that to happen. And some people might not want to dig deeper in going through this deep transformation because they don't need to, because it's not happening, because life is not throwing you to that place of like completely breakdown. And that's perfectly fine. But, but if you're touching rock bottom, if you are really at a place where not, not, nothing makes sense, when your belief system doesn't really apply to your reality right now, when you're understanding life in a way that you say, this doesn't make sense anymore, the way I've been functioning doesn't make sense, that's where my invitation is. Look at it and see if we can really take this opportunity to do a quantum leap into the next level. And that's per it. It takes it takes work. It's a process. It really, you know, it's it's not an easy thing to do, but it's worth it and it's very rewarding. People tell me all the time. They say, Edith or Dr. Shiro, you know, going through this. I would not uh, wish this on anybody. You know, going through the suffering. I don't wish it on anybody, but I would not change this for anything in the world because this has made me who I am today. This is really the words I hear over and over and over. We're talking to Edith Shiro. She's a clinical psychologist. Her book is titled The Unexpected Gift of Trauma. Edith, what are some of the other main messages that you want readers to come away with after reading your book? So thank you for that question. One of the main messages uh, is to understand that trauma is a relational experience. It means that it affects your relationships with yourself and with others. So we're expanding the concept of what trauma is. The other thing that I want people to know is that there is a language for this process. And that's what I'm offering with my book is to have a universal language to describe what we naturally we go through anyway in this healing process. And the third thing, Kevin, that I think is super important is this message of hope to say that uh, there is a light at the end of a tunnel. There is something that you can look forward to when something very, very difficult happens to you. And that not only it's transformational, but it also, most of the time, makes you connect with your life purpose. And that's one of the most beautiful things I see over and over, is that when you get to that healing place, and when you are able to really deal with all the things that come up in this difficulty and in this traumatic experience, you connect with your mission in life, with your life purpose, you become more spiritual, you become more whole in who you are in life and you can give back to the community. So really for me, I mean, it's really so moving to see that over and over and that's my invitation for everybody. And my final question, tell us some of your take home messages that you would like to leave with the Kevin MD audience. You know, to be very, very patient with yourself to be very compassionate with yourself and with others, that we are in this together, you know, being human, and, and especially these days, you know, in which our humanity is being put into question with the levels of violence, aggression, um, hate that is happening in the world, is that to remember that 
you know, the human factor in where we are, when we talk about what's happening in the world, when we talk about uh, the differences with each other, to remember that there's a person on the other side, to be compassionate with the other one, even if you don't agree with what they are, because they're suffering too. And see if we can find uh, some way of empathizing, connecting, interconnecting because we are anyway we are all interconnected so that's my take-home message <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your perspective and insight thanks again for coming on the show thank you thank you it's been a pleasure thank you so much